Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which we are going to see why options are also known as decaying assets or wasting assets. Let us assume a call option uh, which has an exercise price of $75 and this call option is on a share of stock. So the underlying asset is a share of stock which is currently selling for $60 and at this time the time remaining for the option to expire is 180 days. Let us answer a few questions to get going. The first one is, is this option at the moment in the money or out of the money? The answer is that since the exercise price at the moment is higher as compared to the stock price, the option, this call option is out of the money. But it does have a chance to be in the money. So the second question in the series is, does it have a chance to be in the money? And we say yes. And when that can happen? That can happen only when the stock price, that is the price of the underlying asset, rises above the exercise price of $75. Only then this option will be in the money. Now, um, let's look at the uh, next question. Can the stock price go above $75 if there is simply no time remaining to maturity? Well, yes, the stock price could go above $75 even after the option expires. But then the option is not going to be alive to respond to the changes in prices. So the, the answer to this question is yes, the stock price could go above $75, but the option based on this uh, stock is not going to be able to respond to the change in price levels of this stock. So let's write here, the option is not going to respond to price changes in the stock because the option simply doesn't exist anymore because there is no time remaining for expiry at all. So the conclusion that we can derive from this series of questions is that time to expiry is an important factor in affecting the value of an options contract. Now for example, if we were uh, to answer this question, if 100 days still remain for expiry, is there a chance for an option to move in the money and then our answer will be quick. We will say yes because there is simply uh, a lot of time remaining for the option to expire still and who knows what is going to happen to the stock price. It might go above $75 in these 100 days. It might go to 75, 72, 73, uh, 80, 85, 77, anywhere above the exercise price and that would bring the call option in the money. So if the time is there still for the option to be alive, then there is always a chance that the option can move in the money even if it is currently out of the money. So time therefore is an important factor and this chance, this probability is a valuable probability and therefore we can say that the value of an option is equal to two things. Number one, its intrinsic value and number two, its time value. Time value has to be factored in. So therefore higher the time remaining to maturity, uh, or expiry, the greater the chance that the option may move in the money at some point in time. But as the time elapses, the time value declines because the chance of uh, the option moving in the money declines with it. Now there is a Greek letter theta that captures this rate of decline in the time value of an option. So that is what we say here, the rate at which the option value declines is captured by the Greek letter theta and the calculation of theta is very simple. We simply take the first derivative of the uh, value of the call option with respect to time and we put a negative sign before that because we know that the value of the option is supposed to fall with time. Uh, common sense would tell us that on the date of expiry the time value will be zero because there is no further chance that the option can respond to changes in the price level of the underlying asset. Therefore, on the date of expiry, the options value is simply its intrinsic value. Let us uh, put this data, um, enter this data into an Excel worksheet here and let me show you how the time value or the total value of the option goes on declining with time. Uh, I have entered in this um, um, cell of uh, this sheet, the strike price $75 
and I am wanting to see how the value of the call option or uh, let us say the call option, the call option changes when the price of the underlying stock changes from $50 to $100. Now 180 days here remain for expiry. This blue line here, this one indicates to us the intrinsic value of the call option and this red dotted line indicates to us the total value of the call option at the moment. So therefore the difference between this line and this line, this area, this entire area here indicates to us the time value of the option and I am going to start a little movie here for you which will tell you as the number of days for expiry reduce the total value is inching closer and closer to the intrinsic value that is the time value component is being squeezed out of it. Let me press this button here and you can see the visual yourself. So you see the number of days are falling here and the total value line is inching closer and closer to the intrinsic value that is the time premium or the time value is reducing. So therefore uh, with the passage of time the time component from the value of the option declines and on the date of expiry the value of any option call or put is simply equal to its intrinsic value. If this was a put option let me check this button if this was a put option we would have a diagram like this so this blue line would have been the intrinsic value and the red dotted line is again your um, total value of the option and if I push this movie button press this movie button here again you will see that the total value is declining because the time value component is declining with the passage of time. So that is pretty much it my friends. I hope you found this little screencast helpful. Bye bye.